Hello everyone and welcome to the Coding Branch. In today's episode, we finally get to move on to a real programming language, and because we're deciding to build websites and eventually web applications, we're going to be learning JavaScript. JavaScript was notoriously created in 10 days by a guy named Brendan Ike. It was created to be a scripting language alongside the most popular web browser at the time, Netscape. But since Atwood's Law would have you believe that everything that can be written in JavaScript will be written in JavaScript. In other words, JavaScript has become the Swiss army knife of programming languages, but is mostly used with Node.js as a scripting language, with web development to edit the DOM, and front-end web development frameworks, of which there is a new one about every month, and can be used on the back-end by using things like Express and other Node packages. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm going to make things simple by showing you how to use Node to write a simple server so you can play around with and learn JavaScript. Okay, so starting off, we need to install Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. Essentially, you can think of it as something that allows you to compile JavaScript on your computer and leverage other people's JavaScript packages to build cool things faster. To download it, go to nodejs.org and click on the download link to the latest LTS version. Once you've done so, you should be able to open a terminal on whatever computer you have Node installed on and type node-v. It should then return you the version of Node you have. If it doesn't match what you see on the latest on their website or doesn't return anything at all, you need to do the installation again. Now that you have Node installed, you can go into any folder on your computer within the terminal and type npm init. It will initialize this node in your current directory. You will then be prompted to answer a few questions. Feel free to answer them, though it will make no difference in how your application will run. Oftentimes answering these is irrelevant and a burden. So to skip through it, I generally use the command node init-y. This will initialize an application and answer yes to all the questions. You'll notice once you do either of those commands, a package.json file is created. This file is a JSON file that keeps track of the packages we're using. For example, if we install the package express by typing npm install express in a terminal within the same directory, you'll see it appear in your packages.json file. But now, of course, it added a few more things to our directory. From the top, the node modules are those packages I've been talking about. If you peek into one of these folders and follow it all the way down, you'll find they too will have some kind of JavaScript file. That is the code you're depending on for your code to work when you install one of these packages. This is why it is also referred to as a dependency. A node package, node module, or JavaScript dependency are all the same thing that people refer to as different names in different contexts. But luckily for us, we don't have to remember all of that. Programmers are inherently lazy. All we have to remember is what the package is called and how to find the documentation. If you haven't gotten used to reading documentation to work through problems within web development yet, believe me, you're going to want to dive into it with node packages, and you will need to learn the fine art of how to Google and piece things together. It may seem daunting at first, but it's actually unbelievably advantageous and extremely powerful to leverage other people's code to build to your heart's content. That's why Node.js is so popular. To get started with the actual code, I'm going to show you how to build your own server in less than 10 lines of code by using Express. We need to first create a variable that stores the dependency, and we can do that by requiring the package by name. We're using const at the beginning of the variable to tell JavaScript this is a variable that will remain constant within the application and not be changed. We'll then create our app by making a variable called app that calls express as a function. We are then going to create a port for our server to listen in on. Most commonly, the port variable is capitalized, but it really doesn't matter. Now, we'll simply create a function that tells the app or server to listen to that port number and then tell us once it is. If you'll notice in this callback function, I actually use an arrow function. This is just an abbreviation to writing out function. Both work, but I'll always try to point out best practices. 
Now, if we hop back into our console and type node index.js, your app will deploy. And you'll see your server tell you it's listening on port 3001. Congratulations if you've been following along. You just built your first JavaScript server. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoy this type of shorthanded content, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe on your way out.